Joining us now is clinical psychologist, government advisor and journalist Tanya Byron. Lovely to see you, Tanya. Hello. Um, you know, we often talk about these things for months and months mm. over this show, mm. dipping in and out of this subject about the rise of teenagers now suffering with mental health problems. And we were only talking about it again this morning, saying, you know, how do you know the difference between your slightly moody teenager we saw in that clip with Kevin going, I hate you, it's so unfair, and actually a child who has got some serious psychological problems. You know, they're saying three kids in every classroom now, 11 to 14 year olds, will have some kind of problem. We're seeing, I mean, we are seeing increasing rates in, in sort of problems with kids and young people in mental health problems. We're seeing it year on year, and there's been a sharp increase, particularly in the last five years. We're seeing numbers presenting to A&E in, in crisis really kind of doubling, and even more than that in some cases. Self-harm particularly is a big mm. issue. Mm. To, I mean, your question is a really good one, because um, certainly, I mean, I'm a consultant in child and adolescent mental health, so in, in my clinical job, I work you know, in hospitals and clinics with, with kids and young people and their families. And what we see there is, you know, there is a confusion around when is it a, a mental health problem and when, it is, when, when is it part of adolescence and kids mm -hmm. are struggling. And I think the rule of thumb is when you really, really see a significant change in the behaviour of your child or, or the young person, um, your adolescent, when you see that the behaviour is having... a, a an impact on the quality of their life. They, they are really struggling to function or they are showing sort of behaviours that are self-harming or uh, substance abuse. I mean, a lot of that is a transient problem that, will, that kids grow out of. They but get very good at hiding things, though, mm. don't they? A lot of the, the stories we've talked about, parents we've interviewed, are saying, oh, I had no idea they were self-harming. I had no idea they were taking drugs. So, you know, they, they're clever at keeping these things from you. Absolutely, but I think what we see with social media is actually kids are out there talking about it a lot. And a lot of the children and young people that I work with and my teams work with, you know, they say that they don't know how to talk about it and they don't feel they'll be believed or understood. So there is an issue about the kind of different generations communicating and, and how we understand it. I mean, there are some kids who do it because they need somebody to tell them not to. So yeah. there is the room to say no, yeah. stop, you know, and to support kids to do that. But there are other kids who really do have quite significant mental health problems and need a lot of support. Self, got, sorry. sorry. No, you carry on, Janet. On well, we've, got, uh, uh, we've heard from Patricia here that says it's the a lack of connection with real people. When you talked earlier about uh, they're talking to each other on social media, yeah, but isn't part of the problem that they're not talking face-to-face -face with enough people? Because yeah. Patricia says the lack of connection with real people, not machines, definitely has a lot to blame for when it comes to mental health. Well, there's actually no evidence to support that because kids um, are using many different platforms to communicate, but just because kids are online, it doesn't mean to say they're not talking to each other. Okay. And actually, kids are together and they're often together and also they just use a number of platforms to communicate. I mean, I see it with my own kids who are 17 and my daughter's nearly 20. Um, they... they hang out together, they are in large social groups, but they also communicate through, through social media. So I wouldn't say that suddenly we have a generation who don't know how to talk to people. That's so good to hear you say that, actually, because I think most parents with teenagers, you just say they're always on their phone, yeah, they never yeah, talk to me. Definitely. But actually you're saying it's just a different form of communication, yeah. so not to worry too much about that then. Yeah, and also um, feel empowered to say no. Parents yeah. say to me, well, they won't come off their phone. Well, take it off. Take yeah. it off no, them. Or, and then parents say, well, I can't take it off them. Well cancel the phone contract. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to be so disempowered and we yeah. have to remember that we can say no. That is part of being a parent. Mm, so this yeah. kind of sense that somehow kids are running away with technology and we're all very helpless. Mm. We might not get it because we didn't grow up with it, yeah. but we're still the parent. Still in charge. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Um, we had a comment here and it does... I find it quite concerning. I'm a single parent, I'm also a divorcee, and um, it says, simple, having two parents for the child with one at home all the time, that would make a difference to the mental well-being of our kids. The rising separate homes, divorce, displacement and uncertainty for our, uncertainty for our children must surely have an impact on their mental health. Now, that obviously really concerns me. I've got two, two children, 14 and 9. How, um, how serious is it that I'm not with their father? Well, you know, I really struggle with, with generalisations mm. and I, I don't think they're helpful and I think 
you know, the point that's being made there is that, you know, children need two parents in order to be mentally healthy. That's actually not true. Mm -hmm. And I've worked with lots of parents who have two... Pa uh, t lots of children who have two parents who are together. Mm -hmm. The parents who are together are very unhappy. Mm -hmm. They're often very angry. The children then are brought up by two parents in an environment that makes them very yeah. mentally unhealthy. Okay. So I think it's about the quality of parenting and the relationship and I think it's an insult to a single parent like mm. you who clearly bring, you know, you're bringing your kids up with love and nurture and compassion yeah. and also to many single parents, both men and women, who, mm. are, who I think what we see is children do better with separated but happy parents exactly. than parents who are together and mm. deeply, deeply mm. unhappy. Yeah. Yeah.